Hi, I'm Emma, and welcome to my channel. We've covered a lot of stuff since we wrote our first op mode. Now, it's time to put it all together into a new op mode that features a different way of controlling our pushbot called Arcade Drive. Before we dive into writing code, let's first look at how both Tank Drive and Arcade Drive work. The hardware on our bot itself isn't changing, just the way that we use the controller to move it around. With Tank Drive, we needed two separate analog sticks on our gamepad to control the robot, and you have had to kind of mentally figure out which way they needed to be in order to turn. However, if you've ever played a driving game like Mario Kart, it uses a different control system, where you can control the driving with one stick, typically the left one. This is where Arcade Drive picks up the arcade in the name. It's like driving in an arcade game. With this style, the y-axis on the stick should make the bot go forward and backwards, and the x-axis controls left and right. This means that, unlike with Tank Drive, you can't just grab the value of the analog stick and give it directly to the motors. You'll have to combine the numbers in some way. Let's put together a simple diagram of what we want to happen with the motors when we press the sticks in a particular direction. Let's start with the easy ones. To keep things separate when talking about them, I'll use compass directions to refer to the position of the analog stick and movement directions for the robot itself. Pressing north on the stick means we should go straight forward. So that means we want to set the power to one for both the left and right motors. South is also easy, but it would be a negative one for both motors. When the stick is to the west, then we want to turn in place to the left. If you remembered how tank drive worked, Turning left means that the right motor got a positive one, and the left one was negative. Pressing to the east just reverses them, with left positive and right negative. Okay, but what if we press the stick to the northwest? Well, instead of just turning in place, we need the bot to move forward, but turn to the left as it goes. This can be done by running the right motor at 1 and the left motor at 0. You can probably see the pattern now, so we'll just go ahead and fill in the other directions. There. Actually, let's label X and Y based on what they're telling the robot to do. Let's label X as turn and Y as drive, so that we remember what they're for. Now what we need is a way to combine the drive and turn values in order to get the left and right motor powers. As it turns out, you can write drive plus turn to get the left motor power, and then drive minus turn to get the right motor power. Let's try it out with a couple of examples. Pressing the stick to the north would mean turn is 0 and drive is 1. For the left motor, it's 1 plus 0, so 1. And then for the right motor, it's 1 minus 0, which is also 1. So far, so good. Let's try a spin to the left, or the stick to the west. Here, drive is 0 and turn is negative 1. Do the math again, left motor equals 0 plus negative 1. Right motor equals 0 minus negative 1. Subtracting a negative number means it ends up being a positive 1. This is exactly what we said we needed the motors to do. But hold on, maybe there is a problem on the horizon. What if we press the stick to the northeast? That would mean that both drive and turn are 1. Doing the math again, Drive plus turn equals 2. That seems like a problem because set power on the motor only accepts values between negative 1 and 1. How do we fix this? Well, one solution might be to just check to see if the value is over 1 and just set it to 1, basically chopping it off. This would work for this exact case, but what if the stick isn't exactly at 45 degrees? What if it's somewhere between north and northeast? Let's do the math for that a minute. Let's say we still have y at full blast forward, but we want to curve just a little bit to the right. So maybe x is 0.5. That means that the left motor is 1.5 and the right motor is 0.5. If we were to just chop the 1.5 down to 1, then the ratio between the two motors is different and it will make the robot turn differently than what we expect. We need to reduce the motor power down below 1 but still maintain the ratio between them. The solution is to divide both of them by the same number, 
basically scaling them down. But which number? Well, in our example above, if we chose the larger number, 1.5, and divide 1.5 by 1.5, then we would get 1. So the solution is to find the largest of the two analog stick values and divide both sticks by that number. Except there is one gotcha with that. Remember that our numbers could be negative, and if we divide two negative numbers, then it will come out positive. Our fix for this is to take the absolute value of each stick value before we find the max. Then we are always dividing by a positive number and it doesn't mess up the negative values. Okay, we're ready to translate this all into code. I know we took a detour into math world a bit, but for complicated things, I'd really suggest you work a few examples out on paper before you code things up. It can save you some frustration if you have a clear idea as to what the code is supposed to be doing. Let's fire up Android Studio and open up the Pushbot project you created before. Once you've got it open, navigate to Team Code, Java, and then the package org first inspires FTC Team Code. With that selected in the menu, choose File, New, Java Class. For the class name, we'll use Arcade Drive. Okay. Android Studio made us a basic class with the correct package at the top and then public class arcade drive. Let's change arcade drive from just a plain old Java object to an op mode by adding extends op mode right after arcade drive but before the block starts. As before, we can hover over the error and choose implement methods. That will add the init and loop methods. You can always type it in for yourself, but I like to let the editor do the work for me. Before we forget, let's add the at teleop annotation. Now, we haven't changed any of the hardware, so we can actually go grab some of the code we wrote for tank drive. First, copy and paste the two motor fields, left motor and right motor. These get initialized the same way as before, so we can go steal the contents of the init method from tank drive. The loop method is where we start writing something different. Let's start by going and getting the value of the analog sticks. But instead of storing the values in variables named left power and right power like we did for tank drive, let's name them like we talked about earlier. Double drive equals negative gamepad one dot left stick y. And a semicolon ends the statement. On the next line, double turn equals gamepad one dot left stick x semicolon. Notice that we didn't need to add the negative sign because right is positive. Now we can use the equations we talked about earlier. Let's bring back our left power and right power variables. So double left power equals drive plus turn, and then double right power equals drive minus turn. At this point, the numbers in right power and left power might contain numbers that are outside the motor's range. So let's use that strategy we figured out a couple minutes ago. Before we can divide, we need to find the largest number. We're going to use some built-in methods to do this, but I'll point out that there is something a bit different about these methods than we covered before. These are what are called static methods, and they're attached to the class instead of the object. It also means that there is no special this variable available inside these methods. But that's okay, because these methods have everything they need passed in as parameters. You use them pretty much the same as regular methods, but the thing that comes before the dot is the name of the class instead of a particular object variable. Okay, here's what it looks like. Double max equals, now here comes the first static method, and it's on the math class. So capital M math dot, we're going to be using the max method, which, when you give it two numbers, returns whatever is the largest one. So max, open parentheses. Now we want to figure out what is the max of both left power and right power. But remember that we needed it to always be positive. To do that, we can use another static method of the math class, the ABS method. This calculates the absolute value of a number. So the first parameter to max will be math, again, dot abs, 
open parenthesis, left power, then a comma to start the second parameter to max. Math dot abs parentheses right power. Make sure that every opening parenthesis has a matching closing one. And don't forget the semicolon at the end. There, that complex statement takes the absolute value of both motor powers, finds whichever is largest, and stores it in the max variable. We only need to scale the values down if it's greater than one, so we'll make an if statement block to hold the code that will only run if it's true. If parentheses max greater than 1.0, remember that doubles have a decimal, and then create a curly bracket block. Inside this block is where we can do our division to scale the motor powers down. I'm not going to use the shorter form of this in this case, just so it's easier to see what's happening. Left power equals left power divided by max. And then right power equals right power divided by max. There, now we've scaled down the numbers and we're ready to send them to the motors. Make sure you add this new code after the if block. Left motor dot set power parentheses left power. And finally, right motor dot set power parentheses right power. Okay, that's everything. You should now have a functional arcade drive. Go ahead and download it to your robot and test it out. If your code isn't working, you can compare your code to the code at the link in the description.